Hey everybody, Nicole Kaufman here, The Right Therapist, a division of The Conservative Take. I'm here to give you the right perspective on mental health. And today, dudes, I am talking to you and I am here to talk to you about narcissism. Stop being a narcissist. Listen until the end, and I promise today's episode is going to be real short how you can stop being a narcissist. Maybe you're in a relationship right now and your girlfriend, your spouse, your partner is calling you a narcissist and you need to get yourself together. So what exactly does that mean? And how can we stop being a narcissist? Without going into all the clinical detail that you know I love so much, um, I want to give you a definition of what narcissism is. Here's a bottom line for narcissism, folks. It is this, a narcissistic personality disordered person is a person who feels that they are superior to everyone else, that they are entitled to special treatment and that no one else is as good as they are. And this person flies into rages, depressions and destructive behaviors when they are confronted with their own limitations or failures. So does that mean that if you're selfish or if you're confident or if you are uh, goal oriented or goal directed that you are necessarily a narcissist? And the answer is complicated. Basically, the answer is no, you're not necessarily a narcissist if you happen to have goals, if you are a smart person, if you are at the top of your game or the top of your field, you may feel accomplished you may feel like you could be an expert in your field. And I'm here to tell you at High Performance Counseling, which is my private practice that I work with goal-oriented and goal-directed folks, that not everybody who comes through my door is a narcissist. In fact, dirty little secret here, narcissists don't go to therapy. First clue, narcissists do not go to therapy. They don't need it. They think the therapist usually is full of crap and they are fully convinced that it's everybody else who has the problem, not them. So narcissists don't go to therapy, first of all. So if you're even listening to this video right now, you're probably not a narcissist because you just want to find out more about the topic. You want to see how you can do better. You want to learn a little something to see how you could do things differently. And I'm here to help you with that. But if you are seeking help, then you probably aren't a narcissist. So that's your first clue that you probably do not have this personality disorder. And narcissism is a personality disorder. It's not a set of behaviors. If you listen to my last podcast on histrionic personality disorder with Juicy Smollett, then I went real kind of down the rabbit hole on the difference between sets of behaviors and personality disorders. Personality disorders is a whole separate kettle of fish than mental health disorders that are based on symptoms. So go back and watch that episode or listen to that episode to find more out about that. So what can you do if your girlfriend or your partner or your spouse is calling you a narcissist. And I say girlfriend or spouse because a lot of times narcissists are men. Now there are female narcissists, lots of them. One that springs to mind for me straight away is Hillary Clinton. She to me is a card carrying narcissist, female narcissist in the highest degree for all the reasons. So what can you do if you are a dude and you're trying to escape this judgment, this name, this, this sobriquet from your partner. And maybe you can look back at your behavior and see some narcissistic behaviors that you are doing. Again, narcissistic behaviors do not necessarily equate to having a narcissism, uh, a narcissistic personality disorder. But what could you do differently if you are, dis if you are exhibiting some of these behaviors? Number one, I'm going to tell you, you are not special. You are not special. Your mama might have told you you were special. Your teachers might have told you you're special. You're getting all kind of special treatment at work because people think you're attractive and awesome and you're making lots of sales and you're making lots of money, but you are not special. Honestly, you're not. 
You're really not any better than anybody else. So maybe as an adult, now's the time to take all the participation trophies off your shelf, take down all of the awards and the uh, medals that you earned by just showing up to the, the little 5K mile race that you did. And let's just put those away because at the end of the day, you're really not so special. Why aren't you special? Number one, because the rules actually do apply to you. If you took your policy and procedures manual that you got at work and put it on the shelf and it's collecting dust and you're just kind of doing your own thing because you think with all your charm and charisma, you can get away with it. Pull that thing back out and take a look at it because those policies are, and procedures are probably what is going to get you fired someday because you are not following them. The rules do apply to you. Tax laws apply to you. And the, you know, regular society's laws do apply to you. So maybe now is the time to bring it down a notch and understand that you are not special. Secondly, not everyone is inferior to you. I'm here to tell you folks that you're, you, when you look around, if you have the general opinion that everyone around you is practically stupid, if, it's, if you're surrounded by idiots all day, every day at work, and the place would not function unless you showed up, then that kind of clues you in that you're, that it is a very narcissistic behavior. And if you think that way about everyone all the time, and it's been that way as long as you can remember, well, you're probably not watching this video and you've already turned it off because I've offended you, but it may be that that is a, a way of thinking that is really turning off people, that make people hate you, that make people dislike you. So there's a clue. And number three, uh, to kind of uh, follow along that statement there, um, this is not your world and that the rest of us live in to serve you. All right. If you think that we are all a conduit, if we are all a stepping stone for you to get what you want, you can manipulate, you can cajole, you can charm your way into practically anything. And maybe you can, maybe you're good at that, but maybe that's how you see people. You see people as um, fulcrums and levers in order to move in a certain direction to get what you want. That is a real narcissistic behavior that is a total turnoff. And I encourage you to rein that in. If you recognize yourself, if you own what you do, rein that in. Number two, if your partner is calling you a narcissist, then you are probably coming across as selfish. Selfish. And in this regard, you are no better than a two-year-old who does not know how to share. I hate to tell you about yourself, but that is the situation if you are an adult and exhibiting narcissist behaviors, you are coming across as selfish. So I want you, you can fix this. You can really fix this with your partner. And the way to do that, you're going to have to kind of do a little uh, self-observation. But what I want you to be able to do is think about taking turns. It's not what you want all the time. It is not the me show. Maybe take turns. If you went where you wanted to go to dinner one night, then it's her turn to pick, all right? Or it's the kid's turn to pick. It's somebody's turn. Practice turn taking, all right? If you are being called selfish and if these are narcissistic behaviors that you happen to be exhibiting. I want you also, you can also fix this by trying to acknowledge the big picture. So many narcissistic behaviors are about instant gratification and what I want right now. That is selfish, right? Instant gratification. I want it and I want it now. But what is the big picture? Is skipping where you want to go to dinner tonight going to make a huge difference in your life? Probably not. What is the big picture? Can we give somebody else what they want for a minute and wait our turn? That might be a stretch for you if you are indeed exhibiting narcissistic behaviors. And we need to remember that it's about the big picture that matters, not about what you want all the time. So number three, as far as not being selfish and how you can fix this, Here's what I want you to keep in mind, my folks. 
is that at the end of the day, the narcissist does not want to be alone. It does not want to be, he, he or she does not want to be alone. Actually having to be alone and what I call sit in the corner and think about your life. Narcissistic people cannot stand to do that. They do not self-reflect. They do not like to observe themselves and they do not want to be alone. Now they may, might act like they want to be alone, that everybody is just a pain and everybody is so stupid. And how do I even tolerate these people? But it, it, it's kind of a doubt the two sides of the same coin because these narcissistic behaving people or narcissistically personality disordered people, they have to have people in order to have a self-concept. They don't have a self-generated self-concept they must develop that based on their interactions and manipulations of other people. So at the end of the day, folks, you do not want to be alone if you are a narcissist. You do not. So fix it. Fix it. Stop being selfish. Take a look at the big picture. Because if you don't, if you don't do that, you will be alone. And that is going to have a nervous breakdown the uh, proportions of which you can't even comprehend. So rein it in, rein in those behaviors and get that partner of yours to change her mind about you being a narcissist. Okay. You can fix this. You can with a little bit of work. Nicole Kaufman here, the right therapist to have a great week. <laughs>